Good morning. Welcome to chapel in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, and a special warm welcome to those of you that are participating in the Lay Ministry Conference. What does this mean? Where are you sitting? You're probably all sitting together somewhere. Lay ministers? There they are over there in the back. Okay, nice to have you here. We're glad you're here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our reading for today is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. This is one of the readings that's usually for Pentecost Sunday, but since Pentecost Sunday takes place in the summertime when we're not here, I thought we would take a look at it here this morning. Acts 2, verses 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. This is the word of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever cut your tongue? Boy, I cut mine a while back and man, it hurt. I was looking a can lid of a, from a t tomato soup can. You know, that's, that's not a bright thing to do. And it's kind of frustrating when you cut your tongue because, well, you can't put a bandage on it, you know, and you can't put any medicine on it, and you can't apply a tourniquet. Man, that's simply not going to work. You just got to kind of live with the pain and try to put up with the blood until it heals on its own. And while I was waiting for my, my tongue to heal on its own, I noticed all kinds of things about my tongue and how important it really is. It hurt whenever I tried to eat or drink. It hurt when I whistled. It hurt when I gave a lecture or gave a sermon. It hurt when I sang. It hurt when I thought about how dumb I was to lick that tomato can lid in the first place. I learned the hard way how important my tongue really is to me. And we learned from our reading for today that tongues are something that is very important to God as well. We see from our reading that tongues played a very important role when the Christian church was being begun by the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit equipped the disciples to fulfill the great commission of the Lord Jesus Christ. The word tongues is used in a couple of different ways in this reading, and as we consider these two different ways, we examine our own tongues and how we might use these all-important tongues to the glory of God. First of all, in verse 3, it says, They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Now, these tongues of fire, they may not have been the kind of tongues that help a person to talk, but these tongues of fire that came to rest on each of them just spoke volumes about each of them. They proclaimed quite a bit about God and about the apostles. Tongues of fire refers to little flames, kind of like what you see on the top of our candles up in the front here in chapel. Little flames sticking out on the heads of the apostles. And it's something that's kind of strange. Something that's really bizarre, you know. Those little tongues of fire were saying, though, something extremely important. They were saying, these guys right here, they are the ones. They are the ones that have been chosen by God to preach and to teach and to establish the church here on this earth. Listen to what they have to say because they represent God. Now we usually have candles at a worship service. Not always, but we usually do. And the flames represent the special presence of God. And this is a symbolic thing that goes all the way back to the Old Testament times. These little flames resting on the heads of the disciples indicated for all to see that God is present in them, kind of like an eternal candle, like what we have up here in the sanctuary. God is working through them. They are representing God in what they say and in what they do. Verse 4 of our text speaks about another kind of tongue. It says, All the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Other tongues. And by here, by this, we're talking about other languages. God the Holy Spirit enabled them to speak in languages and dialects that they were not familiar with, and this would prove to be a very practical gift. They wouldn't have to spend, you know, like six months, eight hours a day every day in a language school to learn a different language like missionaries have got to do and like I had to suffer through. 
It told them, though, something very, very important. It told the world something important. It was something that was also very symbolic. And it said that what Jesus had done was not for a particular group of people that spoke a particular language, that what Jesus had done was for everybody, everywhere. He didn't want these people hogging these blessings for themselves. What Jesus did, he did for everyone. It took a little while, but the young Christian movement spread beyond the Jewish roots to become the first and largest worldwide religion ever. Tongues. I learned what a special blessing my tongue is to be when I cut it. Tongues. We read what a special blessing these kinds of tongues were to the disciples back then and the formation of the Christian church that you and I, that we are a part of to this very day. Now, you and I, we probably, you know, of course, we don't have little tongues of fire on our heads like that. It'd be kind of dangerous. I think it'd be against the rules around here, too. But we do have what these tongues of fire represented for those disciples. We do have God's presence in our lives. And we can enjoy the fact that God has chosen us by the power of the Holy Spirit and baptism to be his own and to represent God. We have become pure in God's eyes through what Christ has done for us. What the tongues of fire set for the disciples is also true for us. And we may not have the gift of tongues. We may not have the spiritual gift of being able to just pick up another language and start speaking it just like that. But just as in our text, we need to realize that the gospel of Jesus Christ is for everybody. Jesus died for everyone, no matter the color, no matter the ethnicity, no matter the background. Forgiveness of sins won by Christ on the cross is for everybody, everywhere. And like the disciples, we are to share it. And we can tell others about Christ. And to do that, we don't need those little tongues of fire on our heads. And to do that, we don't need to speak in a different tongue, unless it does come in handy, depending on where you are in the world. But to do that, all we really need is a tongue, what we got in our mouths the ability to speak. And we got plenty to talk about when it comes to Jesus, our salvation, our forgiveness, and our living, loving relationship with God. Like with those tongues of fire on on the heads of the disciples for all to see, people can see our relationship with God by how we act, by how we treat other people, by how we worship. And like with the gift of speaking in different languages, people can hear it by what we say. And what we have to say is for everybody. We thank God that he's blessed you with your tongues, that he's blessed me with my tongue, that we might share all these wonderful gifts with those around us. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in with and through Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen.